Thank you very much, comrades. Um, we are happy to be here to speak to the Third uh, National Student Assembly uh, of the EFF. And uh, we, we are very happy that the leadership of the EFF tried everything in its power to make sure that this conference takes place. Perhaps at the end of this input, we should then answer the question in our discussion. Do we need the EFF student command? I'm not saying we should answer that question now, but as, as at the end of this, we should be able to answer. Because I'm going to argue in the in December student, in the December National People's Assembly of the EFF that we do not need the student command. Precisely because there is nothing that you do on your own. Nothing. There is nothing you, you do on your own. You cannot claim to have a life of your own. You cannot run an SRC election campaign on your own. You can't establish branches on your own. You can't recruit on your own. And when left to do things on your own, it's a mess. Do we really need this? So let's take, for instance, VUT. Throughout, under the guidance of the leadership of the EFF mother body, it has been winning elections. The day we say, no, let's leave them, allow them to do whatever they want to do, it is their own organization. You mess it up and lose elections on the eve of important national elections, causing a huge embarrassment for the EFF. Do we need the EFF student command? Or have we set up a team where young people with uncontrollable ambition can join and fight amongst themselves, destroy one another for positions that do not mean anything to society but for self-fulfillment. Uh, we cannot have an organization that is there to serve the interest of individuals. We will need the student command in future in the same way we will need the youth command, the women's command. But why do you form a party when you are still forming yourself? Because by the time you form other political parties, they should be based on the founding principles, traditions, and cultures of the mother body. And yet the mother body has got no traditions, founding principles, and cultures, and ways of doing things. Where do you learn your politics because there is no mother body? You ought to have a mother body. There is no mother body. The EFF, for the lack of a better way, engaged in what we can call political teenage pregnancy. The advice to form the EFF student command was an ill advice. It was wrong. Because you cannot form when you are still forming yourself. There is no organization in South Africa called the EFF. There is no such a thing. We're still at a formative stage. There are no loyal members of the EFF, including leaders, those who claim they lie, that they are loyal to the EFF. It's not true. All of them, in parliament, in the central command team, in the PCTs, I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about the mother body, all of them. Not a single one of them is loyal to the EFF. If you want to test that, remove them from position tomorrow and go and check their Facebook status and talk of loyalty. And there's nothing wrong in not being loyal to the EFF because it's a new idea. 
No one can be loyal to a new idea. Because people doubt. The first instinct to a new idea is to doubt. Can this thing be sustainable? Are we not going to invest our emotions in something that we're going to wake up tomorrow and we're told it's gone? So you, 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 you are very careful about it. And when wrong happens to you, you are quick to give up because you always had your doubts. When wrong happens to you, like, uh -huh, exit. I always suspected. Let me leave. Because it's a new idea. It will take us a minimum of 40 years for this thing to be a proper organization with loyal members. That's the day we're going to pronounce. We've got veterans of the EFF. You don't have veterans. How can you form a student command without having veterans? People they need to look up to. People they need to look up to. You are learning on your own. Because there's nothing to look up to. Six years of existence cannot be something to look up to. We still have many years to go. Many years to go. So, it's like people who say, let's form the union. Let's form the women's command. Let's form the youth command. <coughs> they do that because they've got no experience of forming political parties. The ANC was formed in 1912. The Youth League was formed in 1944. The Women's League was actually much later. SASCO was in 1990. So, you get formed out of excitement of people who are themselves not involved in this job of building an organization, you will form another organization. Because Student Command is an organization. It's an organization. It must have its own members. It must have its own programs. It must have its own offices. The same way the EFF is run. And then you want to do that at the same time. There is no EFF in South Africa. We are still forming it. We are still forming the EFF. Anyone who says this EFF is a chance taker is a fanatic. The most dangerous people in the revolution are the fanatics. If you don't know what are the fanatics, you must Google fan, soccer fanatics at, in London there. You will see how they behave when their football club is lost. <coughs> we don't want fanatics in politics. We want activists. We want thinkers. We want people who can sustain an argument alone without having people clapping hands behind them. In the most hostile environment, without seeking any validation from anyone. We want 1.8 million people out of 54 million people who stand and say, Praveen is a problem. Let the rest of other more than 50 million say, Praveen is right. Sustain your position if you mean it. Why? A revolutionary is always ahead of his times. They will join us later. Like they did when we said pay back the money. But this is so embarrassing. These are hooligans who have never seen anything like that. Later on, that's the language they were speaking in their houses when they speak to their husbands and wives. Pay back the money. <laughs> a language they rejected and said it's a language of facts and hooligans and all of that. We don't need their validation. So, we, we have to grab opportunities. There's nothing wrong. There's everything wrong with opportunism. So, we cannot have a formation that is not grounded 
which gets formed on the eve of elections, branches, and then on the eve of conferences. And then outside that, it goes into a lull. Why? They do not know what to do. Why are they not aware of what is expected from them? Because they've got nowhere to learn from. The mother body branches do the same. You ought to build a branch. Sustain it. And how do you sustain the branch? You don't build the branch and disappear. You ought to keep contact with the branch. What are the challenges? And so on and so forth. So, we really have a problem. Because we must run two organizations at the same time, and all of them are being formed at the same time. The struggle, for instance, let's take the struggle for no fee increase. A terrible mistake you commit, you hold hands with the children of the oppressors, the people who refuse to give us free education, you march with them. You march with people in, in ANC colors. And you say, it's because we wanted numbers. You seek validation. You don't need numbers. You ought to be right. When you are right, you don't need numbers. Holding hands, say, it's a fist must fall. Why would an ANC person genuinely march for a fee to fall when they've got the power to make the fees to fall? They saw an opportunity and realized that you are taking over. And as a result, they came to hijack your genuine strike. Yeah. I agree, revolution is numbers. But there are times where you ought to put an argument and win it alone without numbers. Numbers will join you. Quality into quantity. You ought to have a qualitative argument which must be translated into numbers. Because you may have numbers like the ALC does and not have qualitative argument. So, firstly, let's sharpen the teeth. Let's sharpen our argument. Then win society over a period of time. I don't have a sleepless night when the EFF doesn't win elections because I'll have a problem when the EFF wins elections and lose elections after three years. Why? You would have won elections through opportunism and populism without actually translating seven cardinal pillars into being a bread and butter issue for our people. And when we take over power, we start expropriating the land. And after expropriating the land, forces opposed to change go to get the same people who voted for us to come and remove us from power. Because people will start saying, no, 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 no. But this is not what we voted for. Uh -uh. We voted for you because we thought we didn't want Zuma. Not these things of yours of taking the land. That was not the issue. The reason we voted for you is because we're angry with Zuma. Not those things you are doing. We must win elections on seven non-negotiable cardinal pillars. We must win elections based on the founding manifesto of the EFF, not on current affairs. It's dangerous. Because today's current affairs will not be current affairs tomorrow. How do you sustain your stay in power if your stay in power is determined by current affairs? I'm not saying don't debate in current affairs, it will be irrelevant. But do not lose sight of the strategic objective. Because some of you get lost in the tactics. The objective, what is the ultimate objective. How do we get there? It's neither here nor there. 
Firstly, let's not lose the strategic objective. We will never win the revolution without the workers. But we can't get the workers before we get ourselves. The idea that there must be unions is a correct idea. Let unions be formed, but not by the EFF. Once we're firmed up, once we're firmed up, then we'll say, let's consolidate all these progressive unions into one progressive body which will complement the work of the vanguard of the working class in South Africa. So when the ANC was formed, there was no COSAD. Workers had the struggles, had their struggles, had their own smaller associations and all of that, but there was no COSAD. Because we have to form ourselves first. Will Julius Malema be president of South Africa? It's, it's neither here nor there. The question should be, will the EFF one day attain power? Not individuals. We shouldn't be obsessed with individuals. I do not have a nightmare of not becoming a president. I'm a president of South Africa now. So I don't have to be in office to be president of South Africa. Why am I president of South Africa now? South Africa is led by fools. So I control them from behind. <laughs> Tell them this is the right thing to do, that's the wrong thing to do. So I don't have to be there. You don't have to be in office to be in power. The preoccupation with wanting position is exactly the conduct we see amongst some of our people. You want to be a minister, you want to be in parliament, you want to be all of that. I want to tell you it's not going to happen. Not anytime soon. Our people are doubtful of new ideas. They want you to earn your ropes. That's why, what's the new washing powder now? Mac. Huh? Ariel. It's called the Omo or Sef by our parents. Ariel. Ever give me Ariel. But I'm Mo. Give me Sef. Give me Omo. Why? They, they are not used to this new idea that there is a new washing powder called the area. In the EFF meetings, old people walk in with ANC dukes. Yeah, they can't differentiate. <laughs> They're like, hey, Banabai, we support them, Shim. These ones, who are going. Then they look for something that looks like politics. It's an ANC duke, they put it on, they come. In the meeting, they sit there. Because they can't get used to this new idea. So you represent the future of the EFF. But you are not going to reach that future because you are thrown into a deep end at an early age. At an early age, you won't reach there. Anyway, you are here now. I, that's my view, it's not a view of uh, the leadership of uh, uh, the EFF. One of the decisions you need to take is that a sitting president of the EFF must not go to parliament. What are the students doing in parliament? Because students must be in classroom, mm. not in parliament. Mm. Because if you allow this idea that president of the student command must go to parliament, you will not have a president of the student command. It's wrong. It's unacceptable. When we were in the youth league here in Mangau, in the same place you were, we were fighting to remove Malusi Gigal. He won against us, we wanted to put Makura as a president of the youth league. And Malusi won. But we want the debate to bring him out of parliament. Because Malusi's highest ambition was not to represent the youth. 
He was self-saving and self-seeking and always wanted to be something big in South Africa. So he went to parliament when the constitution of the Youth League said the president of the Youth League must be full-time. He went to parliament. After he won, we won a resolution that said president of the Youth League must be full-time in the office. There are no youth in parliament. The youth are on the streets of Alexander Vugulet. They must be mobilized there. Not in, there is no youth to be mobilized in parliament. Students are in a classroom. They are not in parliament. You have to be a leader of the student command. Must be a thinker. The leader of the, the president of the student command must have the ability and the capacity to sustain a debate. The president of the student command must be a good writer and should have written opinions before. You're not going to write after being president. You must demonstrate it before. <laughs> president of the student command must be an orator because you must agitate. You must have the capacity, students are the most impatient people. They've got energy. <laughs> but you must have them in this hall for two hours, you speaking alone and students not moving. When you say, I'm going to finish now, but not now. <laughs> we can't have a president of a student command that speaks and walks like Godrich God. There must be a difference. There must be a difference between a president or a leader. When I say president, I mean leadership of the student command. You ought to be that. The president of the student command must excel academically and must graduate and must pocket must pocket one degree after another because you have seen now people are graduating PhDs we want a PhD student as a president of a student command because we must be a society that breaks with education. We must be a society that is proud to make contribution to the geography of knowledge. We must be a society that is not scared of intellectuals. We ought to celebrate them by elevating them into positions of responsibility. We must not be scared. You are that type of a generation. The president of the student command, young as you are, you cannot be accused of corruption. You are still too young. You can't be in an SRC, the next thing we are told, uh, uh, you, are, you have stolen. The money. Uh, you have stolen the, the curtains and, uh, and the, the, the towels and, uh, and, the, and the eye of the hotel, the eye. I spoke about this when I was in KZ and what was I addressing? I think I was addressing a radio of the EFF in KZ and they one of those people sent me a message and said you can't condemn us in public. He sent me an email, can't condemn us in public, whatever, whatever. I responded very, in a very simple way, I said, you can go to hell. <laughs> we got into this mess as a country because we couldn't speak against each other's wrongs in public. When we talk to them in private, they never hear us. They sometimes even think we're scared of them. You go on Facebook, you go on Twitter, you say horrible things 
about female leadership. Because if you are threatened by female leaders, you are not different from those who were threatened by Winnie Mandela. Yeah. She didn't threaten them because she did anything. Just her ability to do things that were perceived to be done by men, it threatened them. Don't be scared of women. They are not women, you are not men, you are human beings. Therefore, we are allowed to do everything else that the other parties can do. We have to do that. So that ultimately, the EFF is led and it becomes the first political party to be, which is left and effective to be led by a woman. You can teach the mother body one or two things. You must have the capacity to do so. But you can't do that if you are ill-disciplined. At the center of everything else that you are doing should be disciplined. A revolutionary without discipline is an anarchist. And in the EFF, we do not subscribe to anarchy. We don't. Some of you, you join parties, you don't read any material by those parties. Some of you, you join parties, you don't even give yourself time to look at the type of leaders who are leading those parties. They were gushy. And then when you are told those leaders were gushy, you start joining. Yo, yo, yo. You don't, we don't want leaders who wear gushi, but they, they, they were wearing gushi before you joined the Muslim. Oh, you're not aware. <laughs> you're a walker, official. <laughs> you ought to look at the, the whole picture in totality before you join any political party. In the EFF, at least the mother body, we've got very little tolerance for ill discipline and anarchy. And we deal with it decisively. You will think you are dreaming. And that's a reality. When we brought you here, we brought you here to do your things. Do them. We will never tell you what you must do and how. Don't just, don't try and embarrass the EFL. Don't. Choose your leaders. We don't even know them. We are not interested. After you choose them, we are going to work with them. Choose. We will never tell you who to choose. But for a person to rent a bus and come here, outside the structures of the EFF, you will know us. You must call them and ask them what happened. <laughs> they will give you a report. We have no tolerance for such nonsense. You are not a delegate. You are a friend of delegate. Go and stay at Capel. When your friends finish, they will call you. They will join you at Capel. Don't go anywhere next to the EFF meeting. No one will come to you at Capel. You come to us uninvited. The first question we ask you, what do you want here? You, you know these things, we're not doing anything extraordinary. It is in our blood, it's, it's African culture. That's why every time you are beaten there at home, in the township, the first question they ask you, where were you going? <laughs> we invited you there. Before they enter the space, where were you going? Where not we your guy? <laughs> Then all right, hey, I just went to uh, uh, challenging. <laughs> challenging. They will never go there. Madam, once you are invited and you are disorganized there, and you explain I was invited, this is what they did. The parents, the first thing they do, they take Jai Jan and put it on the waist here. They'll come here. Let's go. I want to understand why they invite you and beat you up there. <laughs> 
But if your story is not clear, your parents are going to be a hey. Peter, I always tell you again. Sit at home. We don't want you to learn a culture of ill discipline. When you are not a delegate, stay at home. Some of them in Pumalanga held a taxi of the EFF delegates hostage and said that it can't move for as long as we are not in this taxi. It can't move. There was no problem. Let them inside. Let them in. I get they want to come. Let them come into the taxi. When they arrived, because we have the taxi, everyone else by name out, out, fine. And then you? Huh? Ah. Ah. It's the car behind the combi, it's not us. Uh -huh. The only peaceful thing which is going to happen to you is to run to the gates. <laughs> run. Out of here. And they did exactly that. <laughs> because we have no tolerance for ill discipline. We don't get involved. We get the reports. We say you are ready. They say we are ready. We come. After here, we leave. What you do is your own business. We're not getting, we're going to get involved. We have a responsibility to protect the image of the EFF, including protecting you. There's no one, no one, who can come and destroy this project, not when we're alive. This one, we protect it with everything. No one, no one will come and destroy it. No one. We will rather not have a branch in UJ. We don't have a problem. We can tell, write a letter now. Send to UJ and tell the UJVC there is no EFF in UJ. So it will not contest elections, nothing. We are not there in UJ. If you think that you can be UJ and define yourself outside the EFF, fine. We'll write a letter and distance ourselves and say there is no EFF branch. So whoever uses that name is using it illegally in UJ. And write that letter. And that, that's the end of it. What will you do? You can't do anything. <laughs> or the only option you have is to be disciplined and subject yourself to the discipline of the organization. It doesn't matter how much you love your friends. If they've declared themselves the enemies of the revolution, they shall be treated as such. Don't have time to play here. So, comrade, we want the EFF Student Command to be an organization that serves as a think tank for South African politics, including for the EFF. New ideas, practical possible solutions should come from you, the young people who are in the institutions of learning. You are members of society before your students. Challenges that are facing communities. You know them better than all of us. You come from those communities. You have to provide alternative solutions and not rhetoric. Practical, well-informed, the solutions that you thought about them deeply. And you say, this is how we can take our people out of poverty. <coughs> the biggest problem of South Africa is poverty. It's not crime. It's, it's not this uh, exclusion in the institutions of Ireland. It's poverty. Once we defeat poverty, no one will be excluded from institution of Ireland. Because we'll all afford to go and learn. Gangsterism is as a result of poverty. You can deploy soldiers and all of that, but those people know that when we come together as a gangster and defeat the other gang, 
This become our territory. We sell drugs and all types of uh, you know drugs without any competition, and we make more money and feed ourselves and our families. So deployment of soldiers is not a solution per se. The solution is the defeat of poverty. And we cannot defeat poverty if we are repeating one and the same things. Because Trevor Manuel's pro, pro, uh, solutions will never take us out of poverty. Ramaphosa's solutions will never take us out of poverty. They are part of the people who have put us into this mess. You know, comrades, in Cordesa, when there were negotiations, these people that are leading us now were already clinching deals. One of the deals which was clinched during Cordesa was Vodacom. Remember, in the 90s, the cell phones were not there, so Vodacom was coming in. And Vodacom was talking to the clerk about coming into South Africa. These people went to Vodacom and said, you are talking to wrong people because we are coming in as government. And we're going to take over this government. And if you clinch a deal with those people, when we come in, we're going to terminate it. Some of the people who are so-called multimillionaires today signed that deal of Vodacom before 1994. So you're talking about data being expensive. Your leaders traded off those things during negotiations. We thought people were negotiating for our freedom. They were negotiating deals. Cyril Ramaphosa says, and he makes that point himself, that after signing the constitution, in the evening during dinner, Rulf Mayer was dancing more than everybody else <laughs> in a happy mood. Why would the oppressor dance more than the oppressed? Because the constitution should have meant that the oppressor is going to lose something. The oppressor was dancing more than the oppressed because they knew they will not lose anything. That's where we are now. We are in this trouble because the liberation movement engaged in cigarette talks with the apartheid regime and they had an elite pact. Why would people who think properly want you to negotiate for free education? Because it must be automatic. And if you go to an extent of shooting, the people who are demanding free education. All was done and finished during Condesa that nothing changes, blacks will get the right to vote, and whites will continue business as usual. That's why we're a problem. Black people, including all of us in this hall, that's how we brought up. We do everything else to please white people. That's how we're brought up. Even me, the political consciousness has to come a man. <laughs> but ordinarily, when you lower your gun, you become a servant. That's how we're brought up. That's a mentality instilled in all of us. We are the servants of white people. And everything else we do, we seek to please white people. So when you say you want a decolonized education, we mean an education that will not teach us to please white people. We don't mean ancient education. Because there was no university then. 
So if you say, let's go back to the olden days, okay, in terms of the olden days, how do you conduct tertiary education? So, deep coloniality means that we ought to find an education system that will fulfill a black African person. Not that we must walk naked with those uh, uh, skins and all that. Eh. <coughs> if that's what you mean by decolonization, then you're going to go alone. <laughs> we're not going there. How do we liberate the mind? How do we remove bl black people from the mentality of being servants of white people into being human beings? Not into being black people, into being human beings. Because all we see as black people is to be human beings. But before we are human beings, we have to be black people first to once be a human being. Because that status of being black is eroded into animals. We are not kids. When you do a simple thing that is done by kids, and from white people's perspective, unexpected of a black person, they clap hands for you like you are a child. Must look at them. So patronizing. Because to them, you can be an adult for as long as you are black. You are a child, worse an animal. <laughs> so we first have to be black, then we'll be human beings. So we must fight to become who we are through an education system that will make us to appreciate who we are. Because the current education system rejects blackness and reduces it into laziness, into sex and alcohol. That's how they define us. They don't see mathematicians amongst us. They don't see scientists. They don't see IT gurus. They see the most corrupt people who are awaiting to get their hands into the state money, take the state money, buy booze, and have sex the whole day. <laughs> because why? We are animals. We can afford to have sex the whole day, even if it's practically impossible. By their definitions, we are not human beings. So, you ought to be that generation which is not going to be like me and the rest. You see, the old man in Devon who says, you can't learn for free to be a doctor. He's correct. That's how they are taught. You must never blame our parents. Those people are traumatized. Those people were beaten to submission. You are, you are actually fortunate to hear that he says uh, you can't learn to be a doctor for free. They actually believed there will never be a black president. It's practically impossible. <laughs> and you don't hear such things and get demoralized. Before the unveiling of political parties, and I invite you to go back into your memories now, Think of political activists in your townships and villages. They are not more than 10. They are not more than 10. Because the whole village had accepted, for this one is mad. How can a black man be a president of a South Africa and rule over white people? These things, these ones are talking are practically impossible. 
those revolutionaries had those things you heard of the doctor every day of their lives, but they were never demoralized. They were never demoralized. I said to you earlier on, a revolutionary is much, much more ahead of ordinary people. You should have taken the details of the old man. I said to the old man, look at us now. It might not be all of us who are learning for free, but there are more than 100,000 children that we have put through the university and the tertiary education system for free. Here they are. That includes doctors as well. So, the more people question your standpoint on political issues, the more firm you must stand and sharpen your argument. Because if people just agree, then there is no need for political parties and political education. We must all go to Bushiri's church and accept everything he says. We are being challenged, and the reason why people question us is exactly why we are in a struggle. That our people are made to believe that they are worth less. There will never be doctors for as long as they do not have money. Huh? So, we are going to have doctors for free. We are going to have scientists for free. We are going to have teachers, nurses, all professions for free. It might not be now, but it will happen in our lifetime. Because you are there. Our struggle is not a struggle, mom, papa. It's a very difficult struggle. It's a struggle which is difficult because there are no physical men and women in police and soldiers' uniforms standing at corners and beating up people. And therefore, we are unable to point at them so that Thomas Makolaka Ubona can see the real enemy. Some people, for as long as you can't point at the enemy physically, they think the enemy is not there. So ours is more difficult because it's a struggle of the mind. You ought to educate them. They say to you, why do you do the things you are doing in parliament? You are disruptive, the decorum of parliament. But here is a man in parliament. Twice the public protector said, you violated the oath of office. You violated the constitution. Don't do anything to him. Why? Because he's a deputy white person. <laughs> Remember, it's white people, it's Indians, it's colors, then it's us. The man serves whiteness without apology. The man defends the status quo and the establishment without apology. Praveen is not for black Africans. It's for white minorities. It's for white monopoly capital. It's for Stellenbosch. That's why when the EFF approached Praveen in parliament, the first person to stand up was a white woman from DA to go and defend their defender. That's what he is. They've sent him Urumil. Praveen is an infiltration in the struggle for total emancipation of our people. Praveen, Derek Haneko, and many others like them were deployed in the revolution to derail it. And when it eventually prevails, they were there to guard the interest of the oppressor. O.R. Tambo warned about this Praveen long before. Winnie Mandela warned about this Praveen long before. He was part of a cabal that isolated African radicals. 
He still does the same today. He says the EFF is fighting him because he's an eighth state capture in the state-owned enterprises where the EFF is involved. Fair enough. Why didn't Pravin tell Zondo Commission about the involvement of the EFF in the state capture? He has never mentioned the EFF. But today the EFF is hitting hard. He's looking for some things to say negatively about the EFF. I want to tell you here and now, there is no EFF in the state capture. There is no EFF in the Gupta. There is no EFF in the big, biggest scandals of South Africa. No way. Not in the PIC. They put us in the VBS to try and link us through the brother of the deputy president and all of that because it's a sign of desperation. They are doing everything in their power to nail down the leadership of the EFF so that they can compromise the revolution. And when they say so, some of you believe them. You believe your own enemy telling you about yourself. And then you call yourself a revolutionary. They now go into trashes to try and find something in the dustbins of the leadership of the EFF. They even look for used condoms. Yeah? Can you imagine a person going to that extent and wrapping a toilet paper that has wrapped a used condom just in the name of nailing down the leadership of the EFF? <coughs> That's how disparate these people have become. When they can't find us in the dustbins, the dustbins are at the gate. What does it mean? These people are at the a gate. The enemy is at the gate. Now the enemy is now moving into the houses. <coughs> they will kill leaders of the EFM very soon. From dustbin straight into your house. They will find you at a compromised position, sleeping. They will finish you off. Comrades, if you had the most corrupt leadership in the world, fighting against the most richest people in the world, why are they not buying these corrupt leaders? Because corrupt people get bought anytime. If this leadership was so corrupt, why are the rupees not just giving these people money and silence them? Remember, your friends who have a hair like yours, you and Wisenia and, and them, <laughs> and Peter, they said, we are working for London. We are bought by London. They said we are bought by London. Now, let me announce to you, London has given us more money to fight Bravi. How can London do that? Because we are the agents of London, isn't it? How can London give you money to go and fight Bravi? Some things, man, maybe if they cut their hair, <laughs> it will start making sense. Because I thought this air is so big because these are the thinkers. <laughs> they don't have time, they are forever thinking and reading. And... <laughs> we are not deployed by London. We are for the truth. It doesn't matter wrong is done by Zuma or Praveen, wrong is wrong. Yeah. We don't care who's committing it. And they will all be treated the same. Twice. A man, the public protector says, this man has wronged the constitution. We must not do anything. We must not do anything. We took an oath to defend the constitution. And defending the constitution does not mean we can't amend it. You can't amend the constitution you don't have. So this constitution we have, we are going to amend it. The same one we are defending. Part of amending the Constitution is to defend the Constitution. 
You do that through a democratic process. Section 25 shall be amended to allow expropriation of land without compensation. The ANC doesn't have option. The conference of the ANC has taken a decision. If Cyril makes a U-turn, he must know he will go home early. He will be on an early retirement. They will remove him, those ANC people. Comrades, I want before, that's why I say to you, listen, study the whole organization and its leadership. I want to, I said, Zuma is a by the way. The real battle is coming. Now, I'm announcing that the real battle has arrived. We're going to fight. And we're not going to make any apology about fighting capital and its representatives. They can go to court sue us for one million, we pay them and fight them the following day. <laughs> Doesn't stop, we will fight them. Why are you worried about uh, one million? You put too much value in money. Mandela paid with 27 years. Tsubukwe paid with his life. Christian paid with his life. Solomon Mashaku paid with his life, not with one million. You are made to pay with one million, you are worried. Struggle has got consequences. <coughs> Pay, <coughs> lawsuit is part of those consequences. You must be happy. It's not the highest calling, which is death. You get shocked by money. You, should, you get shocked when the courts agree with our enemies. Courts are part of the establishment. You ought to know who constitutes the establishment. So, more lawsuits will come, more money will raise and pay and continue the struggle. Continue to expose them for who they are. They are servants of white monopoly capital, which refuses the black child to rise and shine in the country of their own birth. We're fighting for this land. Everything else you must know, it comes back to them land. You think Rothschild is going to give you roses when you are fighting? In exchange, they will give you roses. They are going to use Trevor to fight you. The Rupert will use uh, Pravin to fight you. They want government. They want PIC. They want SARS so that they can smuggle diamonds out of this country undetected. Mm. The Oppenheimers have got their own airport at O.R. Tambo. They go in and out of South Africa with diamonds undetected and gold. That's what we're fighting. Because when they control SARS, SARS will deploy friendly forces at that exit because it's white people who have no problem. If it was Guptas, that airport will be closed by now, not only by us, including by white old gogos who are suffering from pains all over. That day, they will take all types of painkillers to go and protest against Guptas. Fireblade at the O.R. Tambo Airport allows the rich, the white monopoly capital, to take our minerals out of this country undetected. That's why when you fight against SARS capture, you are accused yourself of having problems with SARS. That's why you are scared. We are not scared. If these people had anything against us, they would have jailed us by now. The way we have given them trouble, they don't have anything. They, they keep on trying. They are taking the workers' pension. <coughs> workers' pension into the Rupert companies. That's why they appoint a PIC board and exclude the Deputy Minister David Masondo, who is a no-nonsense. Yet the history of PIC the Deputy Minister of Finance has always been there. But Masondo is a communist. 
They won't allow him to go and preside over those monies because Masondo will never agree that the money of the workers must go and finance the uh, projects of white monopoly capital. We are in trouble. You thought we were in trouble with Zuma. We are in more trouble. All, position, all strategic positions, black Africans are being removed, replaced with minorities. They want every state-owned enterprises. Praveen has got no confidence in Africans. It not only that, Praveen doesn't like us. <coughs> he doesn't love black people and Africans in particular. If you want to know Praveen's views, go and check the views of Gandhi about black people. Then you will know what Praveen thinks of black people. You are on your own. You love them so much that you don't even see anything wrong in them. Because black people like that thing of wanting to get a validation from white and Indians. I don't need that. As long as black African masses are happy with the EFF, let's go. How do we detect they are happy? Every election, as long as we increase with one vote. It means one more mind is liberated. Let's soldier on. Let's... Comrades, my last point, please do not neglect the workers in your institutions of learning. Their struggles is your struggle. Many of them can read, many of them can write. Sometimes they need someone to come and interpret these things for them. You ought to be there. You ought to advise if the deal is correct or not. Some unions are captured by the management and by capital. So you ought to make workers aware that they should be careful of fly-by-night unions which are coming into the space just to milk the resources of the worker. We are there not because we want them to pay us anything. We are there to support their struggles. So, once you are in love with workers, you will forever have peace in your life. Don't love those capitalists. Love the workers. Love the poor. But let me tell you, our struggle is not to go and be in Alexander. We want to take Alexander out of that situation. We want Alexander with roads. We want Alexander with proper houses, with electricity, reliable electricity, clean water, blue dot clean water, flushing toilets. We want clinics. We want schools. Schools which have a green grass in the playing fields there, not some dusty fields. That's not our struggle. Our struggle is for black people to choose where they want to stay, and when they choose to stay where they want to stay, they should afford and they should be allowed. You must do that, black child. If you have the money, it's not a stolen money. It's not a money where you have exploited people and misled them. It's your money. When you spend it, spend it wisely. And remember, there are poor people next to you. Help them. EFF leaders help a lot of people and will continue to do that. Comrades, if you are going to stand here, and you don't know why you are standing here, please don't do it. There's no money in the student command. There's no traveling allowance. There are no hotels. There's no car. There are no bodyguards. There's no cell phone allowance. Nothing. You lead yourself and go and raise those resources 
to make your work possible when no one is going to spoon feed you. So if you are coming into this leadership, please be aware that there is no allowance. It's not like in the SRC. If you are a leader who's plotting divisions amongst the students, you must be ashamed. If you are sitting here in front with us and you sponsored pra parallel transport from Limpopo, from Natal, from Western Cape, to come in an Atlas bus, luxurious bus, and you sit here in front with us, you are the most dishonest person. You must be happy it's not in the 80s. But if you did exactly that, you must know you are growing badly and your days in the revolution are numbered. You want to see the next day. If you are sitting with us here in front, you must know you won't be in the front tomorrow because these people have seen you who have seen you for who you are. There's anyone here in front who has divided you and sponsored illegal activities in the EFF Student Command leading to this assembly. Please isolate and don't be ashamed when you isolate. You ought to hit very hard so that those who come after these ones who have divided you should learn their lesson that leaders do not divide, they unite and discourage. and discourage parallel transport, parallel accommodation, raising money illegally to finance your own factional activities. That is a war against the EFF. It must never be tolerated and celebrated. Comrades, delegates, treat each other with respect. Don't impose your views on anyone. Stand up, make your point. If it's rejected, you'll come back in the next conference. You're not going to impose yourself through a rude manner of debate. This is not a council, university council. This is not parliament. There are no enemies here. Yeah, we are one. That conduct of the university council and parliament or local municipality, it only happens there. It doesn't happen inside the EFF meeting. Here we listen to each other. Here we tolerate one another. We tolerate even more women. If you find yourself being irritated by a voice of a female, you've got a problem. Yeah. You need inside clean sea. It means you have joined a wrong organization. In the EFF, we don't elect people because they are women or men. We elect commitment to the revolution. So if you are going to elect a person because you don't want a female, or you are electing a person because of the saying of a female, even when you know there is no commitment, even when you know that the criteria are defined, she doesn't meet or he doesn't meet, you are a problem. You are a big problem to the revolution. Comrade, I wish you all spoke the same language I spoke so I can express myself properly. I, I have a problem with people, young people, who are not articulate. It's so embarrassing. Eh? In a debate, there is a, a SASCO here, there is a Syrian command here, and then there is a DA, a, what are they called? Das. Those ones of DA, of course, they don't know issues. But their English is clean. I guess they are from that arrangement. So it's, uh, it's clean, it's proper. Then they defeat us with English. Then we accept, or okay, nah, the English is not our strong point. Because we don't come from those things. Then there's these ones of the ANC of SASCO. They defeat us with the politics. Our one. 
we must get one right. <laughs> one. At least politics we must get right. Yeah. You, are, you are a leader. You are stammering in a debate. You are a leader. You don't read minimum of 50 pages per day of a book, random book. Leaders must pass time with books, not with Twitter. The most informative thing you can say is what you got from Twitter. You never found it in the pages. And alcohol, number one. <laughs> or no, read minimum 50 pages per day. Hey, we don't have time. Mara, alcohol, you have time. Leaders that are swallowed by alcohol do not represent the future of South Africa. Remember, our future is not the EFF. The future is South Africa. We want this country. We want you to come and lead this country. It can't be led by drunkards. You know, there are comrades I know in parliament from Limpopo, from the ANC. They were in exile. There are stories of exile are super. They know how to operate guns. They infiltrated the country. They killed. They've been with the ANC forever. But they are drunkards. They've never been anything despite their beautiful credentials. They've never been anything, not MEC, not uh, HOD, not minister, not the kids come and overtake them. When you stand with them during break in parliament, they smell alcohol. That's your future. If you're going to have a problem with books, or when you can go confidently, comrades, confidently, for the whole six months without touching a book. And then you are going to be the student command president. When they ask you which book are you reading, or Bona magazine. <laughs> it's not a book, it's a magazine. You must be known for throwing concepts phrases. You don't even have to understand them. You can only throw phrases and concepts if you read. Huh? A student leader speaks and you don't hear some scary concepts. Are we in a community, some committee? No. Because students have got their way of speaking. They just stand up here and they say, no, the situation is cantankerous. <laughs> yeah? Those are students <laughs> and leaders of students. You are attractive like that. You must be young. You must be dynamic. You must be attractive. We must not be ashamed to point at you as you pass or there passes the leader of the student command. Good luck. Thank you.